All right, Brad, a lot of email inquiries about kitchen knives. How do I tune it up? What's the best way to do it? And make it sharp again? Well, uh, I would look around and see if I couldn't find a professional sharpener and have him do it. And then, of course, with me, you know, you, you look in the mirror and it's like, oh, there's a professional sharpener right there, you know? And, uh, but how would I do it? Well, there's two or three, actually there's six ways to do it now, and that's uh, six of the sharpeners. The round, the rectangle, the long handle, the sharpen spark mini, or we call it four in one, the sharpen spark, and the uh, sharpen, the uh, survival sharpen fire. Is that okay. thing sharp? I think that's my personal. It's been okay. through a lot of cutting boards. I doubt it is. All right, yeah, and uh, you've, you've really, I Slicer. see some flat spots, you know. Uh, oh, this thing won't slice paper. <laughs> I, I might whack and beat the paper in two, but, oh wow. No, okay. So, I mean, if I was in the kitchen, uh, if I was in my kitchen, hey Cabo, um, I have, you know, sharpeners right there in the drawer. I've got my keys, I've got my sharpener, I've got some sharpeners in my pocket. So let's just whip a sharpen on this one uh, with my little, uh, it's called a poker chip, you know, or the round, and um, it, it's, you know, uh, that's, I don't want to push too hard because I might accidentally end up with both of my fingers cut. Okay, but I'm going to show you something here right up to the camera. I am pushing a little bit. Look at my fingers. There are little channels in my finger right now. So, yeah, I, I actually especially, well, both of them. Um, so let's uh, quit talking and, and uh, start sharpening. And let's just kind of whip a sharpen on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put about a 10 degree bevel on it like this. We're going to turn it at, uh, I don't know, anywhere from 15 to 45 degrees, anywhere in there. Just not 90 degrees to the blade. We do need to turn it a little bit. I'm going to put it on my leg. Uh, I'm going to tip it up a little bit, tip this down a little bit where it's comfortable. Put my finger over the corner right here so I don't slip off and come down and dig into the corner. And then I'm just going to work along here like this and come right on out towards the point, toward, towards the tip of the knife like that. I can actually come back here. My right hand doesn't have to slow down, change, or anything. I can actually just move the knife back and forth on my leg, just like this. I'm adding, now because it's so dull, I'm actually adding what might be three or four ounces of pressure because I literally need to cut that blade a little bit and reshape it. Uh, it's been allowed to get pretty dull. And then just tip it over here. Now on this point, I'm going to come back this way so I can fly right off the point and make sure that the, the point back here is sharp. Not that it needs to be. Uh, in fact, the first half or three quarters of an inch of the knife maybe shouldn't even be sharp because that's where your hand your fingers are. But we're going to go ahead and sharpen it and then we come on out like this. I'm adding a little pressure to it, running right along out towards the tip of the knife like that. I can do it again. Now I'm just going to slide the knife back. Just like this, come out that way. And we got... Whoever just saw that has to comment. Okay, go. All right. <laughs> just like this, and then right on out. Are we live or? No, no, no. We will be once we're on, but not right now. Okay, so just like this, we do live and then we don't do live. Uh, we'll probably try to, okay, I can feel the wire edge starting to develop. It's looking nice. Uh, on, on the cutting edge, so I'm gonna stop sharpening it on my leg and I'm just going to start touching it really light. I flip the knife every pass, trying to maintain a 10 degree bevel. And I'm going to touch it about 20, maybe 30 times, 15 on each side. I just get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and polish the blade a little bit. Hey, Cabo. How you doing, buddy? All right, let's see. I can't see the cutting edge like I, I could a little while ago, so it must be thinner, must be sharper. Okay, so let's see. All right, that's a huge difference right there. Um, it isn't as sharp as it's going to be, but at least now I can cut the paper like that. So let's, and that, that bites, it's starting to bite. It doesn't bite like it ought to. I will not do this anymore with my fingers. Uh -uh. <laughs> I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. How you doing, Cabo? You want me to have that stick? Okay. So let's, all right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna show you uh, other sharpeners. This is called the four-in-one tool. It's about three inches long. It's about five inches an inch in diameter. It's got the open face, uh, long uh, carbide edge right there that I use on almost everything. I might even, I might even demo the uh, the V-notch because that thing is really dull. Um, I wouldn't suggest this on all your knives and no good knives uh, at all. I don't use it on my hunting knives, pocket knives, and stuff like that. And then it's also got the bottle opener right there, and you unscrew the black handle from the red, 
okay, and uh, that's your ferrocerium rod. And the ferrocerium rod, of course, is for uh, making campfires, lighting the barbecue. Woo, that's hot. Just like that. Okay, so what I'm actually doing is I'm taking the uh, 90 degree hard, sharp corner. I'm putting my index finger under the bar, under the ferrocerium rod itself, supporting it, getting a hold of the, of the back part here. And just like this, my middle finger is getting hold of that. My thumb is actually on the black part and the bar. My index finger is supporting the bar so it doesn't move. If I'm back here somehow, this is really kind of goofy. It doesn't work. So support it with your index finger. You scratch some of the coating off. I'll hold still. This is dark in color. Okay, it's kind of black. That's a coating that's on there. This coating doesn't spark. You scratch it a few times underneath the black coating. It's silver. This silver is actually metal. It's ferrocerium rod. It's a combination of six rare earth metals, magnesium being one of them. So you just take the sharp corner, stick it on there, give it a little bit of down pressure, and then a quick, oop, a little faster. You know, spark like that. Okay. You screw this back together, just like that. When it touches, give it a little bit of a tweak so it doesn't just unscrew. Um, I'm going to do something that I, I really kind of never do, but I'm, I'm going to do it because this knife is, is crazy dang dull. I'm going to go ahead and run it through the V a few times. I'm going to leave a little bit of metal on the table and show you how it is capable of reshaping a, basically a cheap kitchen knife, you know, quickly. So it would be just like this. Holy cow, there's metal all over the table. Now what I'm doing right now is what everybody says carbide, tungsten carbide sharpeners ruin your knives. First of all, if you're not trying to reshape a blade, you should never, ever press this hard on any knife for any reason. If you do, it, it's just your own ignorance and your own stupidity. And then you blame the sharpener. The sharpener's inanimate, can't do anything. So improper use of a tool is 99% of the problems with almost any tool that you can find and people complain about the tools. It's operator error. Um, some people do it deliberately so they can, you know, bitch and complain and some people are just ignorant and they don't know any better. Once they figure out or somebody shows them or tells them, you know, what the problem is then of course they just fix it and go on about their life. Um, so let's <laughs> do uh, a few more passes on this one and then I'll, I'll uh, move and you can get a good look at the metal on the table okay so let's uh bunch it up here a little bit a whole bunch of it went on the ground a bunch of it stuck to the knife got carried away and then it fell so let's see and that's actually pretty sharp uh, i've never said that the v-notch won't get your knife sharp all i've ever said is it's too abusive on the knives and uh, it's just not a good idea. But now that I've reshaped that really dull knife, I'll go after it with the open face and I'll tune it up a little bit. But let's see what it looks like now. Okay, as you can see, there's way, huge big difference there. Um, so anyway, now let's, and that's pretty sharp, all right? A symmetrical V-notch with tungsten carbide is gonna have a sharp corner over there and it's gonna have a sharp corner over here. If you have two sharp corners that are symmetrical, in other words, they're even, if you divide it down the center, they're even on this side, even on that side, and you draw your knife through it, you don't tip it this way, you don't tip it this way, you go right straight up and down in the V. That way it cuts on both sides of the blade. Oop, that's right. That way it cuts on both sides of the blade equally. All right, and if it's cutting on both sides equally, it's going to take the cutting edge to the center. It's gonna take the sides down it's going to thin the blade, and once it gets the blade thin enough that it comes to a sharp point, you know, then that's that's all you need to do. Um, so let's go ahead and, and uh, give it a little tune-up now. Now with the round one here, I can actually go out and back, out and back. I have two corners, one left, one right, so a 90-degree corner, 90-degree corner. So I can go out on this corner, tip it over, come back on this corner, go out on that corner, tip it over. And I do this a lot. I double my sharpening speed if I go out on one corner, come back on the other corner. Uh, if I'm not pressing too hard, I can go, I don't have to flip it over. I can actually push it lightly, just like this, push it like that, like this. Okay, now let's just go ahead and polish the blade. 
And that's uh, tipping the knife every pass, light pressure, all the way out. We're kind of blending it all in, blending all the sharpening in, polishing, taking the wire edge off the blade. Light touch, just like that. All right, let's see. I'm a, just a little bit lighter. Okay. That's pretty good. So let's... Uh, I'm going to use the same piece of paper so you don't accuse me. Mm. You'll accuse me anyway. That's okay. I kind of enjoy it. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to use the same piece of paper because uh, I'm just going to be honest with you. That's actually a different kind of paper than what I was cutting on. These are uh, ads, like for grocery stores and stuff. So I am going to go back to the same type of paper that I was using before, with the same piece of paper. Okay. And we make them cut like that. If you can, that's, that is flimsy paper. If you can cut radiuses uh, around, in fact, let's have some fun. I want you to take a piece of paper and I want you to cut a circle. <laughs> All right. Now, the only way you, the only way you can actually cut a circle, and I'm going to hurry, out of a piece of paper is because you can actually. I need to tune this up just a little bit. It shouldn't fight with me like that. So I'm going to go to the, the bigger one, the green one. Okay. So we're just going to touch along like this. Come back this way. I don't use a different type of sharpener to get it sharper and sharper and sharper. Hey, buddy. You want something? What do you want? Huh? Got it. Um, I don't use a different one of the sharpeners to make it sharper, sharper. I just got to demo them all a little bit. But right now, I'm just going to refine the cutting edge a little bit more and a little bit more, just like this. Touch it light, touch it real light, flip the knife every pass. Now, we're you got to remember, we're going from the knife that, huh, I still have two dents in my fingers. I didn't realize I was pushing quite that hard on it. Um, we went from a knife that wouldn't even cut my fingers pushing pretty hard on it. To a knife that's at least as sharp as you've just seen it and it didn't take very long to do it all right so let's get rid of that one right there and let's shorten this up a little bit of course the wind is going to raise cane <laughs> with me um, If the knife isn't sharp, you can't slide it through the paper, and therefore you can't keep making it round and rounder and rounder and rounder. So as you try this, that's getting pretty round. Um, as you try this at home, make a circle out of a piece of paper and try to make a real circle without using scissors and stuff and see how easy it is with a knife that's only partially sharp. Anyway, that's pretty close to a circle. Um, that's kind of the way we do it. Um, you know, thumbs up on this little pro oh, that actually that actually bites. Um, and I don't have to push too hard. Uh, you should be seeing, oh, that is really stuck. Uh, you should be seeing little white spots showing up on the blade. Another thing I do is your little finger actually, even if you try to hold it stiff, it's, it's not very stiff. Let's see if it'll drag my finger sideways. See how it jumps and, hip, there it caught. See how it kind of jumps and jerks and, and everything? That means that blade is sharp enough to hang on to the fingernail. En enough to drag it back and forth. So uh, I'm going to work on this maybe just a little bit more. Uh, it's not as sharp as I would like to see it. Um, so let's work on it just a little bit more and uh, then we'll come back and show you, um, you know, maybe in the next video or something that this particular knife right here